to Lawrence Tech. I'm Jim. Um, today we're getting close to the end of this series on curve fitting with MATLAB and different ways to do it. Uh, we're going to look here at a, at a 3D surface. I've got two independent variables, x and y, and one dependent variable that I generated. And it's kind of a funky looking surface there. But uh, we'll look at how we fit that with the backslash operator. And I should point out the final video in this series is going to be about evaluating the parameters of these regressions. You know, are they significant? Do they make sense? So you'll want to. I assume you'll want to look at that one as well. But the good news here is we're not going to spend any more time than this in PowerPoint. Let's jump right into MATLAB. Have some fun. And then I'll put these files up on, on GitHub and put a link down in the description if you want to grab these as an example. So we're going to set up a regression. But first, let's look at the data here. Almost missed that step. Here's my data that I generated mysteriously. Click on the rotate there. Uh, if I turn that, let's turn it so we're looking just at the in the x direction. And if I kind of carefully tilt it, oops, um, I can get it so it almost looks like I'm looking straight through the data. I'm seeing a lot of curvature here. So I'm assuming that this is obviously not linear in x. Uh, if I turn it around here, sometimes it's hard to know which way to move the mouse. If I play with it here in the y direction, um, you know, as I look at these points, I'm not seeing much curvature in the y. So I'm guessing it's linear in y. But uh, go back to the x direction. As I play with it, I hope I'm not moving it too fast here. Um, I'm seeing I'm very high up in this corner here where x and y are highest and, and very low back in this back corner where x and y are the smallest. So I suspect there's an x and y interaction. Well, I do more than suspect, I know, because I created this data. You know, and it's just, it's just nonsense data, I, unlike, you know, I didn't try to fabricate a scenario here. I just created some data that's nonlinear in x. It, it is linear in y. And if you kind of just look your way through that, that you're seeing straight lines and there is an interaction. Okay, So there's our data. So what do we want to fit in terms of a curve? Okay, Something in x that's nonlinear, something in y that's linear, something with an interaction. So I'm going to set up of variable states. And this is why I did it last time, even though it wasn't necessary. I'm going to assume there's some kind of offset or intercept, ii, and that's just a constant set of ones, OK? And then I'm going to assume there's going to be a term x, a term x squared, a term x cubed, and a term x to the fourth. So I'm looking at a fourth order polynomial, or uh, when we get into this kind of order, you might argue it's probably stupid. But this is what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I started out with second order as I was playing with this, and it didn't quite fit. So I added a third order. I added a fourth order. Uh, pretty typical progression for a lot of people. And I, I think I, I hope I beat you over the head. Just don't automatically throw a polynomial at it, in spite of the fact that's what I've done. Um, I've got a term here, a linear term for y, and an x times y. And I'm using the dot times, so it's element by element dot power. Um, so I'm creating a giant array where each column has um, the same number of values, the, you know, the number of samples, which happens to be 100. So I've got 100 ones and a column of 100 the 100 x values in a column with the 100 values of x squared, x cubed. So this is my state array. OK. And then I'm going to use the backslash operator to get the coefficients that will fit an equation like this. And I put this as an example. My expected value, or my dependent value, is some constant times 1, some constant a2 times x, a3x squared, a4x cubed. And oh, I didn't update this. Um, 
a5 times x to the fourth, and that'll be a6 times y, and a seventh constant times interaction, okay? Um, so that's the equation I'm trying to fit, okay? So it's, it's, we have seven different coefficients we're trying to fit. It's a fourth order polynomial in, polynomial in x, and there's an interaction term, and it's just pretty arbitrary, okay? Uh, so let me do this. The so number of states is just the number of states. Um, so I here I'm using the backslash backslash operator to find these coefficients. So my coefficients are equal to the states backslash my dependent variable, the output, okay? And here my comment is a1 to a3, but I think we're up to a6. And if I go back to MATLAB, uh, so there's my coefficients. So my intercept or constant is minus 1.3. Uh, 11.9 x squared minus 30.8, ah, excuse me, 11.9 times x minus 30.89 x squared, 37 x cubed minus 16 x to the fourth, 1.6 times y and 0.4791 uh, times x times y, okay? not going to go into a lot of statistics and are these good or are these bad in this video. I, I'm going to save all that for the next video just because otherwise these get ridiculously long. Um, but here, just because it's here, I calculated expected values, which are this, that state matrix times the coefficients. So I get all the expected values of my um, dependent variable. And I can calculate the residuals, the difference between the regressed and the actual. And I can do some statistics on it here and, and get my R squared value, uh, 0.97. So 97% of my curvature is explained by my regression, and about 3% or 2.5% is just noise. That's a pretty good fit. Um, oops. Now here, because it's multi-dimension, I'm going to set up those xx and yy kind of things like I typically do. Um, so I've got minimum x, maximum x, and I make up a delta. I set up so there's 20, 20 values in my grid. Same thing for y. I'm just setting up parameters for a grid. And I'm using the mesh grid command to give me a grid of x, y points that I can evaluate, evaluate selection, just like before I created those variables, just a whole bunch of points to generate a curve. And here I'm essentially, I've taken my equation, ones, and this, you know, a bunch of ones times the first coefficient coefficient, first value in the coefficient, coefficient 2 times the x, coefficient 3, the x squared, so on, x cubed, x fourth, coefficient 6y. So this equation here, for this to make sense, has to match up what I put here in my states, okay? But if I evaluate this, so now I have a grid of x, y points and the expected v, z values. If, Open a new, I'll make, let's make this figure two, because I already have figure one up. Um, so I'm going to do the, create that mesh, and then I'll plot my actual values on top of that. Pretty things up. And there's my picture. Let me make that bigger for you guys. So if I look, rotate this around, uh, if I bring it up here, look at it kind of on the side from the X space, um, it doesn't look awful. I'm, you know, I got stuff above and below, uh, rotate it around here from the Y side. You can see it's linear in Y, and as we go down that curve, Again, things are above and below. It's got that interaction pretty good. Um, I'm seeing some points down here that 
kind of hang down below and kind of funny wow shape that you're, you know, it's a fourth order polynomial, so it's going to be kind of shaky or kind of curvy in the middle. Whether that's real or not, it's really hard to say. Um, but we will look at evaluating these in the next video. I'll, I think I'll use this data set and we'll look at plotting the residuals and I'm going to leave it here. It's too easy to go on and on. Um, again, the last video we'll talk about evaluating some of the statistics and determining what may or may not be significant. Hope you found this useful and I'll catch you on the flip side.